Welcome to the different ways of monetizing your brand, blog, and audience in our latest episode of Blogger Union Radio. My name is Paola Mendez, and I am the founder of the Blogger Union. The Blogger Union is a network of blogger communities dedicated to growing our members' brands and incomes through meetups, workshops, and brand collaborations. If you would like to find out about local events in your area or find out about brand collaborations, make sure to become a member. It's really easy. All you have to do is go to thebloggerunion.com, click on become a member, and that's it. It's completely free. And if you'd like to follow my blog, it's Coral Gables Love. Our speaker today is Brianna Pear. She writes about blogging. She coaches bloggers in how to launch a book and all kinds of other shenanigans. Welcome, Bri. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and joining us today and sharing all of your wisdom with us. <laughs> Absolutely. I can talk about blogging and monetizing your blog for far too long. So you're probably going to have to cut me off. <laughs> wow. All right. We'll cut it up at one on the dot. But before we get started, would you mind telling us a little bit more about yourself? Absolutely. So hi, guys. Um, thanks for being here and for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us. I'm so excited to chat with you guys um, and to find out we have like fellow Minneapolis um, friends here in the room. So hi. Um, if we haven't met yet, my name is Bree. Um, I am the founder and CEO of a company called Thrive. And Thrive is an educator for bloggers and um, social media influencers. And we got started about, oh my gosh, seven years ago now, six or seven years ago now. And we um, were based out of Houston. I'm in Minneapolis now, but um, started in Houston with um, a in-person conference. Um, there was just this big need for, you know, I had a lot of blogging friends who, you know, kind of similar to like what we're talking about now, like they were, you know, starting a blog and didn't really know how to monetize and make money from it. Um, some were getting approached from, I mean, I had a friend that was even approached from Amazon to do story takeovers and she's like, I don't know what to charge them. And long story short, she ended up charging them way too little, but you know, there was just that need for like, okay, we need more education. We need help learning how to do this because we're spending so much time and energy, but not seeing results from like income. So it was either, you know, time to start making money or time to go do something else. Um, and so we're like, okay, well, let's start a conference and we can pull in, you know, speakers and other bloggers that, you know, know what they're doing. Very similar to what you guys have gotten started here with the Blogger Union, which is amazing. And I was a part of the Blogger Union down in Houston and now up here in Minneapolis and it's been so much fun. Um, and so, yeah, that's how Thrive got started. We did a in-person conference and just said, let's see what happens. And now here we are all these years later, we kept doing in-person conferences up until COVID. Um, we started a podcast called the Thrive Blogger Podcast. If you guys like podcasts, we'd love for you to listen in. We have new episodes every Thursday. Um, and so, yeah, we've kind of just kept growing. We have a Facebook community and it's been a lot of fun. So that's me. I, I started, I got into the blogging industry as just like a hobby and something for fun. And then, yeah, hit that point where it was like, okay, I need to actually make some money from this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wonderful. So for everyone who's tuning in, Brie and I are going to have a discussion about the different ways that you can monetize your blog. But if you have any questions along the way, feel free to add them to the chat. We'll have a Q and a section at the end, and I will make sure to go through as many questions as possible within our hour time slot. Okay. Wonderful. Well, let's, started, let's get started with the question of why is it important to have different ways of monetizing your brand, your blog, and the audience that we are all building? Yeah, I mean, so as, as you're kind of getting into this, like you guys are definitely like your entrepreneurs and your business owners, like thinking of your blog as a business and how it's so important to have multiple streams of income. Um, we've seen a lot of bloggers just kind of hone in on focus on one, let's say affiliates and um, just kind of hit certain points or needing to hit certain levels where it's just kind of like frustration. And, you know, there, there's different things with that. But then the other thing too, is like, I don't, 
ever recommend putting all of my eggs into one basket um, because you never know what can happen with the algorithm or something changes and you don't wanna lose all of your income. And so that's why, you know, talking today, we're gonna to talk about like four different ways that you can make money because I think, especially like when you're new and going into it and maybe even if you've been around for a long time, you always think of like these like main one or two ways to make money. And um, there's really so many ways. I mean, we're talking about four, but like there's so many ways that you can make money from your blog and it doesn't have to look how it looks for everybody else. I think that's like one of the main things It's like we get into this mindset of like, you know, when we follow people on, we follow their blogs and we follow their Instagram and we can easily, you know, since we're constantly on the internet, it's so easy for us to get sucked into like this comparison game, right? And this, you know, mindset of like, oh, well, that's how they're doing it. So that's how I need to do it. And the truth is like, there's so many ways that you can do it and make it unique for yourself and make it work and make it something that you love for a long term. Absolutely. Uh, what you said about putting all of your eggs in one basket is I see, you know, for example, for us, the blogger union, we were very heavy into uh, doing events, in person events. And then if yeah. we had only focused on doing in person events, when the pandemic hit, that would have been the end of us. <laughs> right. Because if that's the one way that you do things and something happens, something changes, and that one avenue of monetization is now gone, then that's the end of your business. So right. it really is a great way to minimize the risk, you know, of like, if you become a full-time blogger and earn an income enough to just pay all your bills and make a living uh, monetizing your brand, you'd want to minimize the risk that something happens and your income is completely gone overnight and it, it's impacted overnight. So when you have different streams that it really minimizes that risk and, and it also creates new opportunities that you didn't even realize when you try different things, you might not realize that if you had kept just doing, for example, brand collaborations to monetize your blog, you wouldn't have realized that, hey, if you write a book, you could maybe make or have speaking engagements or whatever different monetization strategy you come up with could be way better than whatever you're trying now. So diversifying is super important. So then um, let's talk about which ones uh, how, which types of income streams have a huge impact for content creators? So something that I've heard, we've been hearing, um, not recently, we've been hearing a talk about for a while now is digital products and courses. So can you tell us first, what is a digital product and how is it different from a course? Sure. So I think when, you know, I, I keep talking about this a little bit and I'm so excited that you started with this one um, because I think for a lot of bloggers, it's like new and can be a little bit intimidating. And I am here to tell you right now, it can be super, super, super easy. And like digital products is something that you can start with and truly not have to sell. Um, and I think that's the other thing too, is like, oh, I don't want to make a digital product or a course because I don't want to sell things, right? We want to create fun content. So with a digital product versus a digital course, a product could be something like an ebook, a printable, a download, kind of like a one-off thing that they can get instant access to. Um, it could even be something like Lightroom presets, um, something fun. Like there's a lot of creative ways you can do things with it. And then a course Again, it can be as small or robust as you want. It could be something like a, just a one-off, like a video series that you send out through an email when they sign up and they get a series of three emails with, you know, tutorials in it or a video in it. Um, or it could be, you know, using something like Teachable where you actually like upload content to it. So I think the biggest thing is like, it can be as big as scary as you want it to be, but it can also be like super easy and just a really fun way to, you know, give that bonus extra more in-depth content to your audience. Absolutely. And when it comes to digital products, it's like the sky is the limit. It could be absolutely mm -hmm. anything. Uh, in one of my many blogs, <laughs> Dapper Animals, it's a crafting blog, we sell uh, templates for crafting uh, tutorials. So it could be either a template for them to um, 
cut something on their Cricut or on their Glowforge or just follow along the steps to cut some felt and create some, some uh, craft. And we charge for those. And those kind of sell themselves. Uh, um, so it could be anything from a, a little template that people can follow along to um, itineraries if you're a travel blogger. Like the sky's the limit. <laughs> so it's good to have that in mind. So uh, let's say we all came up with our ideas for digital products or even a course if it's more in depth. A lot of people have trouble actually selling it. So how do you get your audience to actually take out their wallet and spend the money on the products that you are creating? Do you have any marketing ideas for us? Yes. So like I kind of alluded to earlier, like I, the, what I teach is like a really easy way to sell with you without you actually having to sell anything, which sounds like a marketing gimmick. I know it sounds like something you would get on like an ad that pops up and not want to click it because you think it's clickbait. But here's the thing. So you guys know that, you know, I'm sure you guys have talked before about how important email is and how important it is to get people onto your email list, right? Just in case something goes down with one of the platforms, you need a way that you can own like lists from your audience, right? Be able to get in contact with them. And so one of the easiest ways to get started with that is by creating a free opt-in. Now I'm starting with this first because I'm going to get to the, you know, something you're going to sell and make money from in a second, but you want to start with a free opt-in that will be like an instant yes. So if somebody sees a pop-up or, you know, something in your sidebar that speaks directly to a problem they're having or a need or just something fun, right? Like you mentioned, you know, you have a craft blog. So maybe you have like a free printable that you can give away that somebody seeing it would be like, oh yes, please give me that. Or maybe it's instructions for them to print out, you know, instead of like finding the blog post for it. Um, something that can be super, super simple, but also like make them like, oh yeah, I need that to where it's not even a thought for them to like, oh yeah, here's my email address, send it to me. Um, so you start with that, you figure out, okay, what does my audience want? And then what you do in order to sell your digital product is in whatever email platform you're using, I love to use Flowdesk, um, but whatever one there is, there is an option for you to send them to a thank you page or to a URL um, after they fill out the form. Um, and you can use that URL to send them to a thank you page. And this can be something super, super simple again. Um, but on that thank you page, it can literally just say, Thank you so much for signing up. Go check your email. Your printable is in there for you. I can't wait to see what you think. By the way, if you love that, I think you're also going to love this. And it can be that next level thing. So let's say you did a free printable on you know, a DIY that you guys are doing or a craft or whatever. Um, the next thing could be a more robust ebook that you're selling for $7. And maybe it's, um, 10 back to school, you know, printables that you need for your kids this fall, or, you know, something, you know, along the same lines of, you know, what they already signed up for, for free. And, you know, the, where they're like, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, another example could be if you're a food blogger and they click because, um, they're signing up for a free printable on, um, an, shopping list to for quick and easy dinner recipes right and then your upsell when they go to the thank you page after they fill out your form could be cool here's an ebook with 36 easy dinner recipes under 30 minutes they're already like well we already want super fast and easy dinners and now you've just given them even more options and so whenever you're getting started with selling, and that could be for a digital product or digital course, whenever you're getting started with that, that's like the easiest way to get started selling because all you now have to do is point people to your freebie. You never have to point anybody to that product that you're selling. Your only job is to get people to sign up for your free offer, which is awesome. And things that like come really easy to us, right? Of course, we want to like send people to this free, amazing thing that we made. Like that's an easy like push and share. Um, and then it automatically will do that. 
And then from there, you know, you can look at the data, see how things are performing, um, see if you're pushing it enough, right? That can always be kind of a trigger for us if we don't like share our content enough, see if you need to push it more or if it's not converting correctly, maybe you need to like change the copy a little bit, share a little bit more about why they need it. Um, and then the fun thing is after that, once you've got that product for sell for sale, I always recommend starting with something that's a little bit more evergreen, which means it could be sold at any time during the year. And then you can make more free offers. So you can do more freebies for your audience. So start with one and then add in a couple that all always redirect to that thank you page with the upsell. So then you're still just sharing free things. Um, so I yeah. love, I love that. So, uh, that's a great marketing tactic and you'll hear that being called so many different ways, a lead magnet, a freebie, a download. Uh, but that is a great way to lure uh, people in to show them your, what you actually have to sell. So thanks for sharing that. But you did mention that, oh, well, maybe if it's not performing so well, and you also, uh, I think when we talk about the different monetization streams, we always have to go back to when you are creating a product and when you are creating a freebie, right? At the heart of it, what makes someone want to give you their email in exchange for that freebie? And so we have to always go back to that first step and make sure that what we are creating is solving a specific problem. Because <laughs> if not, then it's going to be really hard for the, you know, even that first step in your sales funnel to get started if you're not truly knowing what your audience is looking to solve and you are solving that problem. So that's something that we always, in all of the things that we are creating and all the different ways that we're monetizing, we want to make sure we have that in mind. Even when we're working with a brand, right? We want to always know what our audience is coming to us for in terms of what problem we're solving for them. Because when we work with a brand and we add some content that does not help them in any way, that's when our content, our brand collaborations don't perform that well. <laughs> and right. uh, people are put off by the content that we're creating. So, okay, wonderful. So uh, we talked about uh, digital products and courses. Let's talk now about affiliate marketing. Tell us in general what affiliate marketing entails. Yeah, so affiliate marketing is probably one of the first ways that I think bloggers jump into monetizing. And so that is when you are sharing a product or a brand and you share a link or a code um, that is affiliated with you. So that means whenever anybody clicks your link or uses your code, if the person on the other side of that makes a purchase, you get a small commission. And I say small commission because I mean, it can literally be anywhere from, you know, one to 2% to, you know, finding ones that make $20. Um, and so there's a huge range of products and brands that you can work with on affiliate commission. And um, one of some of the more popular ones are like, like to know it or shop style, like to know it's also called reward style. Um, so those are the ones that I feel like most everybody has kind of heard of, but then there's also um, a huge list of other ones that you can go and find. I mean, really it's finding a brand that you love and want to share with your audience. And you can type in the brand name into Google and affiliate program and something will pop up for you to be able to share it. Absolutely. And then um, when it comes to affiliate marketing, again, right? You have to think about how you're solving a problem for your audience. And that is how people will actually click on the link and right. you'll get the commission. So for example, when we teach the class on how to build your website, right? Like people are coming to us and we offer that class for free. We show you how to build your website for free. And we are, you know, solving that problem. And in that moment, we're telling you, this is the best hosting provider. And we get a commission on that uh, link if you sign up for that service. But it's all very transparent and it's, it's very obvious what problem we're solving at that moment. So it's like a no brainer because the, uh, our audience 
uh, our, our students who are taking the class know exactly what they're getting, what problem they're solving. They're getting a website. And so it's really easy for us to, to get that, that commission and for that program to perform well for us. So if you sign up for something that does not, is, is harder to sell <laughs> because it does not yeah. um, uh, solve a problem for your audience. So for example, if we were to sign up for, um, I don't know, staples, <laughs> uh, office supplies, it would be much harder. We'd have to find a specific way for staples to solve a problem for our audience. Uh, so you have to be, keep that in mind. And something also that I always recommend to our members is, you know, when it comes to affiliate marketing, always look for programs that give high commissions, you know, because mm -hmm. there are some programs where like you're going to bust your ass and promote and solve a problem for your audience. But after all that trouble, you get like 20 cents. <laughs> Yeah. And that's disheartening. I mean, I have so many girls that are like, I think I sold something on Amazon, but I'm not seeing a commission or it finally comes through. And yeah, it's like 20 cents. And it's like, okay, this, I'm going to have to sell so many things to get to exactly. a payout. Right. Exactly. And then when you have a huge audience with millions of followers, then those small commissions might make sense. But if you sure. have a smaller audience, then you want to start looking for for brands that align perfectly with your audience and give you better commissions. So uh, if you're looking at anything like $10, $50, $100, then now it's worth your effort to sign up for, um, for that affiliate program. So Chris is asking, how can you find affiliate programs with high commissions? So uh, it really comes down to when you are thinking of a brand, um and you look up their affiliate program what type of commission are they offering you so you have to do the math usually the the commission the affiliate programs tell you a percentage commission so if it's a amazon right <laughs> and they're like okay for clothing products we're going to give you 10 percent commission but you know that shirts are usually ten dollars then you're going to get one dollar <laughs> Wait, yeah. no, not even one dollar. <laughs> you gotta do that. <laughs> so I think it's like 10 cents actually. Um so you have to do that. So there are different affiliate, there are big uh companies that are affiliate programs for many brands. So you can sign up with those and check what brands give you the highest commission. So even uh, like to know it, there's brands that give you 20% commission, but yeah. the the items that they're selling are hundreds of dollars so that is a good commission and then there's other um networks of affiliate programs like share a sale or cj uh, commission junction i think their email their um url is cj.com impact um you really just have to evaluate each affiliate program um per brand and see if it's worth your time and effort to promote that brand in exchange for a commission right so I was going to mention a couple real quick too. There's another one, um, Savan Social, S-I-V-A-N Social is another one. Um, they're a great one to sign up for. Um, and then on ShareASale um, and probably on the other ones too, I'm, I'm not sure, but with ShareASale for sure, I know you can like really sort through brands there. So you can, it's got a great um, toolbar there where you can enter, you know, like, okay, I want brands within this category um, and I want to sort it by commission rate. And that's how we found some really awesome ones. Like where you can find higher paying affiliates there within, you know, the categories you want. So like some that we pulled were like daily harvest does $10 per sale. Um, all bird shoes does 15% per sale. And, you know, thinking outside of the box, like booking.com, if you're like a travel blogger, they do a 25% commission, which is huge. So, um, I know on share sale, you can search by commission rate, which I think is brilliant. <laughs> Uh, yes, absolutely. So there's a ton of affiliate networks and that's great. You should go into those networks and search for for the brands that you're interested in and, and look for the and organize them by highest commission first. Yes. <laughs> um, and someone, uh, Rahaf was asking, is shop style and like to know a good commission site to use? So what is, are your thoughts, Brie? 
I mean, yeah. So to me, it really depends on, you know, with shop style slash like to know it, um, you have to apply to get into those. So there is a little bit of a barrier to entry on those ones. Um, and again, like they can have, you know, like you were saying, like they can have really good commission rates on certain things and really horrible commission rates on other things. So it's going to be kind of similar. Um, they'll have different brands than, you know, other ones will. So it really depends on like, what brands are you wanting to share? Um, is it important to you to like, is your audience going back to your audience and thinking about what they shop for that you're, you know, what problem you're solving, what are you sharing and then how they shop. So, you know, a lot of fashion bloggers will use things like, like to know it because their audience is already shopping through that app. And so if you're a fashion blogger, it makes sense to want to be on that app. Um, so it's really looking at what kind of products are you wanting to share with your audience and making sure that it relates to your content and the problems that you solve. Um, and then how your audience shops is that's what I think. What about you? Absolutely. I think those, if you're a fashion blogger, those are, you know, they have all of the big fashion brands on those programs, uh, like to know it or reward style. And, um, I, I do recommend it, although most of those don't have as high a commission as other type of programs, right? Yeah. Other programs that are like travel programs, uh, tech programs, uh, you know, the less uh, sexy it is, it usually the higher it pays. <laughs> so well, and even like thinking outside of the box too, like you can get commission on like digital things as well. So like you were saying, you know, like sharing the hosting company that you use, um, sharing, you know, Flowdesk, um, like you can earn commission through a lot of different things that are just digitally based. Um, ultimatebundles.com is a really, really cool one that has like a 30% commission. It might even be more than that. Um, but it's, it's really cool. And I, I recommend checking that one out as well. And they do things for all niches. So there's always a fun bundle coming up that'll fit for your audience. Yeah. And the other, um, upside of being using reward style or like to know it is that for most of the brands in their programs, you can use those uh, referral links for your own purchases. <laughs> it's pretty much almost every brand except Amazon. So it's like whatever commission that they give you, it's like a nice discount when you're shopping for yourself, if you remember to use your own links. So, <laughs> okay, perfect. So we'll continue with the questions when we get to the end. Let's talk about a, a couple other strategies to monetize your brand. We talked about affiliate marketing. Let's talk about ads. How do you feel about ads? Ads can be amazing if you've got the page views. Um, so with ads, it's truly, you know, until you have quite a large number of page views, I would say minimum of 10,000, but really you want to be over 20 to 50 and up a month. Um, I think it's a great, which kind of incentivizes you. Like if you have really low, low page views, it's a great goal to want to get onto a certain ad network. So how those works is you just literally as simple as it sounds is just an ad that you see on other blogs. It's an ad company that will place ads on your website. Um, and you get paid again, like a commission or, you know, uh, for having people view your ads. And so, um, you know, I think, you know, I always, my suggestion is not to waste any time or um, slow down your site with Google AdSense because I've done the math and it's like, you have to have so many page views to make even like a dollar. Like it's, it's actually quite crazy. Um, and it was like, oh, well, if you hit a hundred thousand page views then you can make $200 a month. And I'm like, that's not worth it. So by the time you get to that, you're going to be, want to be on one of the much bigger platforms that really focus in on bloggers. And so like one of the bigger ones that people talk about is Mediavine. Now, if you can get to where you have the page views to be applied, you know, to apply and get accepted on Mediavine, amazing. That is an incredible, incredible revenue stream for you because it's going to pay out a lot. And you could, I mean, like I said at the beginning, we recommend you diversify your income, 
but you could, you know, just keep pushing out amazing content, keep your page views up and make a really decent income from ads through something like media buying. Um, so I think it's awesome, but I, I think for a lot of bloggers, especially bloggers getting started, it's a great goal is like, okay, I want to hit, you know, with media buying, um, you have to have 50,000 sessions per month to be able to apply. So it's like, awesome. That's an amazing goal. I want to get there because I know the payout is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, that's wonderful. The other thing about ads, you want to be careful is that uh, I see some websites that they just really put so many ads on their their website that it's impossible to read yeah. the actual content that you create. So, um, so you definitely, if you do go the ads route, make sure that you don't uh, ruin the experience of your visitors to your website because you have too many ads on your website. And the other thing is, if you feel like um, you're, you know, you want to try ads before you hit 50,000 uh, sessions a month, you can always sell ads directly if you have a very clear niche to brands on your blog and just not in terms of like how many views their ads get, but like uh, uh, in terms of like uh, months that they can put their ads on your website. Uh, mm -hmm. And you might be able to sell that for way more than you could get on Google ads. Um, by selling so it directly. So if you ha or have like a mom blog and you have a local um, uh, childcare company that is looking to reach uh, the people living in your area, they might be willing to spend money and advertise on your website at a higher price than you would if you go through any of the ad networks like Mediavine or Google AdSense. So Okay, wonderful. So we and I would like just add on to that too. Like when you're working with them and I mean, pitching them and, you know, giving them this idea of, you know, give them like, okay, for three months, you can, you know, have an ad on my sidebar for this amount of money, but also to be like, can you give me like a 10% code or something like something to where they're going to be able to link sales from your blog um, I was talking to a blogger on our podcast, um, it was Kari Ann from Thistlewood Farms. And that's how she got started with monetizing with selling those sidebar ads to small businesses. And I think she went and did it for like five businesses and got it to where she was making a thousand dollars a month from these ads. And she said she never had to go and pitch one again because she made sure like she shared those referral links, like not only it's, it's kind of that, you know, go above and beyond, right? You want those sidebar ads to work for your brands because you want them to stay there and to keep paying you. And so sharing those links, you know, if they give you a 10% off code, go and share it on social media, go share it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on all these different places to get them some sales. She was saying, she's like, I was even sending it to relatives and friends and my mom, like go buy from this store, but it worked. And because of that, you know, those small businesses or brands, you know, referred her to other people and was like, Hey, you need to get on her sidebar. Um, so I, I love it. I think it's a great idea. I'm glad, glad you brought it up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Working with local small businesses, ads on your website is one, a great way to establish those partnerships. I'm glad you have <laughs> a podcast about that. Okay. Wonderful. So the way that most of our members like to monetize their, um, blogs and audience is through brand partnerships. So do you have any advice for us in terms of knowing our worth when it comes to a brand partnership? Such a good question and a very big question. Um, and you know, honestly, one I am currently doing a lot of research on and putting, trying to put together some type of pricing guide because I feel like it's very much all over the board and I can see numbers come through that are far too low. And I'm like, hold on, we all need to like be bringing the industry up. And so, I mean, I don't have like concrete numbers to share like immediately, but I would say, oh gosh. I mean, for the most part, just, you know, talking to other people, I think that's almost one of, maybe one of my biggest tips is, you know, when you are not a blogger and let's say you just have a career and you are a doctor or somebody in marketing or whatever, there are all these 
research, all this research done already to show you how much you can expect for a salary with that position, right? You can go to glassdoor.com and look up and see what is the average salary for an engineer in Minneapolis, right? It's right there for you. For us as bloggers, that's not the case. And so that's why I'm like, I'm always here to talk about money. If you come to me and like, I have this amount of blog or this amount of followers, this amount of page views and everything, I can kind of help you, you know, shape a number from there. Um, and I think that just shows like the importance of bloggers needing a community. They need a community like the blogger union, right? Where they can talk to each other and share numbers and sh like be free and open about that. Because until we all start talking more and more, like we're not going to be able to get to the point to where everybody knows exactly what to charge and what their worth is. That is a great idea. Would anyone be willing to share your rates in the chat? If you guys want to share your yeah. rates for one Instagram <laughs> post, what's your rate for an Instagram post, in feed post, and what's your rate for uh, a blog post? If anyone is uh, willing to share their rates and their amount of followers, uh, we can all get some a little clarity <laughs> about uh, knowing our worth. Uh, because what I would lo love to is if anyone is brave enough to say that I, I don't have to say your, you can send it to me via a uh, private message if you want. We don't have to say your name out loud. But what you will see is that someone who has um, a smaller audience could charge 10 times as much as someone with a, a, a huge audience. And it really is all over the place. It, it really there, you know, some brands could be paying for the same campaign, someone $50 and someone $2,000. So, um, yeah. and or also nothing at, at all. <laughs> I think are that, nothing. I think also like, you know, your engagement rate truly matters. Like I've seen bloggers that have less than 10,000 followers, um, on Instagram, right. If we're just talking about Instagram, but her engagement rate was over 4% and that's above average. And, you know, she is, you know, doubting her worth and value. And I'm like, that number right there is what you have to put in front of brands. That's the number where you're like, okay, my follower count may be lower. You know, um, I think somebody said, you know, my follower, her follower count was 5.2 thousand, Kelly, Kelly Lynn. Um, but if your engagement rate is reaching a super high number, tell them that. Be like, I'm charging this because I'm actually reaching this many people versus somebody with 25,000 followers who has a 0.6% engagement rate. When you look at the math, they're actually reaching the same amount as you are because your engagement rate is so high. And I think that's something that bloggers don't leverage enough is showing that number, especially when you're just getting started, because truly I see so many bloggers with less than 10,000 followers, their engagement rate is phenomenal because they're okay. honed in, they're focused. They didn't get distracted by, you know, the numbers and all these other things. Like, yes, we want to grow, but focus Absolutely. on that engagement rate. And not only the engagement, because now that Instagram has been hiding the likes, we've all been seeing even less engagement in terms of uh, likes in our, in our content, but it also your reach, you know, like if you have 10,000 followers and you post a reel and it reaches 30,000 followers, that means you have 300% reach. That is incredible. That, you know, <laughs> that is something that you definitely should be promoting for the Browns. All right. So we have some brave souls who shared their rates in the chat. So let's talk about them. <laughs> so Kelly Lynn yeah. is sharing that she has 5,200 followers on Instagram and she sells one post for between $150 and $200. And she's right. She tells, I usually try to upsell because when a brand comes with a partnership in mind, they usually don't just want one Instagram post and you're done, right? So for right. something like that, you can also upsell for stories or if you, so that's why I think pricing gets so complicated because a campaign, a partnership is not usually just one post. It's like, well, do you want uh, to 
share my post afterwards? <laughs> do you want to use it for advertising afterwards? Do you want to put uh, your link in my link in my Instagram links pages? Mm -hmm. Do you want to swipe up link in the stories? Do you want me to not work with anyone else in your industry for a, a specific amount of time? And all of those add ons are you have to charge for those and the price can go up very quickly when you start with all those yeah. up, uh, add ons. So you're absolutely right, Kelly. Thank you for sharing your rate. Or if they're wanting, you know, um, rights to your images, that is one thing that is huge. A lot of brands need good imagery. Um, and you can sell images for minimum $500, um, and up. And so that right there is a great way to, you know, upsell. Um, and then the other thing too, like what you were kind of saying is, you know, it can be like a one-off post, but talking to them about doing like, like, okay, cool. Well, why don't we do like a three month campaign? And why don't I post once a month for you? Because, and come to them with data. Like that's like the fun part, right? Like there's a marketing person on the other end of that email. So to come to them with some data, be like, okay, I can do this for you, but here's what I think would really help you, you know? Here's what, you know, you don't have to say this, but like, what can you do to make them look even better to their boss, right? Like, what is something that you can help them be like, go and brag on to their boss because they got this amazing campaign with you and it worked phenomenally. And so, you know, being like it, well, my audience, if I show up with this brand three months in a row, they're more likely to purchase because they've seen me talk about it so many times. Absolutely. So. And something that works for me for long-term partnerships is um, the brands I know that we talk about that we're offering them exposure and we absolutely are. But if you can show them that people took action because of your content, they went to their shop, they went to their venue, they bought something, they, um, yeah. you know, something, if you can show any type of action like that, and have numbers making case studies of your previous uh, partnerships, then that is what actually sells um, your, your, your upcoming partnerships, your future partnerships. And people will see that they, you know, they will be less hesitant to invest money in you because you can show results, which is really difficult. I am, not, <laughs> let's start there. It is really difficult to show results because you know, even if you have a coupon code or an affiliate link, right? People could click on your, you know, meet this brand because they clicked on your affiliate link and then noodle around the internet, stumble yeah. across another link and you don't get the credit <laughs> or the commission. But the um, credit that you can get is how many people saw the post and how many people you expose the brand to. And, you know, like there's like stats out there. It used to be like seven times. I think it's like more like eight to 15 times that a person needs to see a brand or a product before they're going to make a purchase. That Let's say as well. that's a lot, you know, that's why you'll see, you know, so many bloggers working with one brand is because they're trying to do a massive exposure. And so don't discredit like your worth. If like nobody purchased with your code you still gave them that exposure. And so you can pull those numbers at least. Absolutely. So a page is asking me if I can share my rates for Coral Gables Love. So for, I'm um, happy to. Um, okay, so for a static feed, I mean, also the rate also for me depends on who I'm working with. I will work for free with a local restaurant because they're hurting right now in the pandemic and all this stuff. But if you're like a bank and you're knocking on my door, I'm going to charge you more than the rest the local you know, family owned business. And that's the way it is. So let's pretend it's someone in the middle, <laughs> <Because> <laughs> just a, a, a middle uh, brand. I, for a static post, I would start at $500 for an image. Now, if you want me to do video, uh, create a video, uh, so like something like a reel, a thousand dollars. And then, uh, I, for example, I was do I'm do I'm working on a, a campaign right now for a set of stories, where I do not have to leave my home. Uh, Two hundred dollars for I sell a stories in. Uh, what I call three frame stories, because you get three frames for the one story. Uh, and that includes a swipe up. Um, 
And uh, if I have to leave my house and go somewhere, there is a $500 like uh, attendance fee <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's going to take more time out of my day to just go to the thing that they're doing for me to get the content there and stuff. Absolutely. So uh, I know a lot of, uh, of our members do not charge an attendance fee. And to be perfectly honest, if uh, some brands knock on your door and they're inviting you to go to a thing and you say, oh, well, I have a fee to attend your stuff, you might get blacklisted because some brands just are not used to that, depending on what city that you live in. Um, but hey, you have to know your worth. So you'll see, I don't work with that many brands only if they are willing to pay my rates and they are a good fit for my audience. And, and that's the way it works. And I've been really true to my niche. And so really amazing opportunities have landed on my lap. I've written a book because the publisher came knocking on my door <laughs> because my niche is very, very specific about the city I live in, Coral Gables. And so, so yeah, I got the, the, the writer's advance and then I get my um, commission. What is it uh, um, that it, when you, when they sell oh, books? Gosh. Ro ro me. They're not royalties. I just got really? the key. It's, I don't think it's royalty. It's something else. But whatever. You, whenever they sell one of the cookbooks, I still get also a commission on that. So Paige, I hope my rates helped you. The other thing that you have to keep in mind is that when brands approach me, I have case studies for the stuff that I have done in the past. I can show yeah. that I have worked with brands and I have sold hundreds of thousands of dollars through my codes. So my rates... Um, have that to back them up so um you know if you feel like you don't have those case studies then just start working on those and then depending on how much you know the brands make from your partnerships then you can start tweaking with your rates but also just remember to not be afraid to when someone comes offering <laughs> you a product in exchange for your time that your time is worth more than a shampoo <laughs> because yes. <laughs> it takes so much time to create this content. So we are going to way go over time, I can see, because we have lots of questions coming up. But also, a lot of people shared their rates, and I want to share the rates with you guys. Marissa Daly shared that she has 9,500 followers and usually charges between $350 and $500 per post, depending on the brand and the budget. She's also gotten 1,000 for one post and a few stories because the brand came first with the number. It's all over the place often. Marissa, I love that you said that. Something that we can learn from Marissa's story is that you should always ask for the budget. Most of the time, brands are not gonna tell you what the budget is, <laughs> but when they do, you're going to realize that whatever price you had in mind was way lower than their budget. Uh, and you can also always negotiate. So I would say if you have a number in mind, I would shoot above that first. Go at least a hundred to two hundred dollars over what your baseline, what you absolutely have to get. Like, what is your like? If they don't sit, tell, come back to me and want to sign a deal at this number, if it's lower than that number, I'm not doing it. So go a couple hundred dollars or however much over that number, and then if they negotiate down, you're at least getting your bottom line. Absolutely, I love that, Bree. Thank you for mentioning that. Do not be afraid to negotiate negotiate your rate when they send you the contract and they added things that you did not agree to in the contract yes, tell them read that. your contract <laughs> and marissa's engagement is almost nine percent that is amazing marissa marissa i feel like you need to <laughs> increase your rates leverage them. that yeah i think your rates need to go up <laughs> um okay so Paige asks us, does a list exist anywhere where add-on options these days in terms of things that you can charge for a partnership? I'm expecting, you know, that's a great blog post that should be shared. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one either, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so right I don't have that, but, um, but yeah, that is something that's, that's a, I'm so glad you mentioned that Paige. We should work on that resource. I would just start brainstorming too, like on your own while you're waiting for that amazing blog post, just, you know, all the different ideas, because there is a giant list of variables where there it's 
a blog post and an Instagram post and stories or just one of those three. So there's so many combinations. Absolutely. And something when it comes to pricing, you guys, video is expensive. Remember, video is expensive, much more expensive than a photograph. Make sure to increase your prices whenever anything related to video is that they're expecting. Marissa also shared that she creates a detailed campaign report of impressions, likes, views, DMs, comments, sticker taps, etc., to report the brand after the partnership. That is amazing, Marissa, that so few of, of us do that. And really, when you send a post campaign report, that really makes you stick out ahead of the pack because it looks super professional. You're helping the PR people on the other side so much because they have to make those reports. And whenever you make their life easy, they love you and they want to work with you again. Okay, Max is saying, I've changed my career. I make short 2D animations. I don't know the price for my work whenever a message for partnership comes except asking other animators, how can I find a reasonable rate? You want to take that one, Brie? I mean, I think, you know, asking other animators and talking to other ones is really good idea. Like definitely like shoot DMs and, you know, ask them, Hey, I've got brands coming to me. I want to make sure one, one way to always look at it is like, I want to make sure I'm not bringing the industry down. I want to make sure that you guys are getting paid and I'm not undercutting you. So like, what is your base rate for these two or three things? Um, I think that comes across very like, oh, like, yeah, absolutely. I want to share. Um, and then the other thing too, like you were saying is just um, asking for the brand's budget and starting there too. Um, mm -hmm. And with 2D animation, I imagine that's something similar to video. It takes a lot of time to create. So don't undercut yourself. Absolutely. I love that advice. Yeah. Ask for, uh, look for forums, animation forums and ask for advice. There are also Facebook groups now of yeah. everything and go in there and ask and people usually, um, will Maybe like people to, to share. just go in Facebook groups and search too. Okay. There's probably a post about them already. Exactly. Great. So Paige says, so helpful. Paula, <laughs> how much do you charge for a blog post? My blog posts start at a thousand dollars. I'm here to share. <laughs> giving all I my appreciate rates. it. I am here for it. <laughs> uh, so Raquel, very helpful. Marissa, thank you, ladies. You are welcome. Thank you for sharing and adding some, you know, clarity to this whole mess. You know, I just hate it when like some people, uh, you know, don't value the amazing work that you're doing. It, you know, it takes work. I mean, like some people, I remember a restaurant uh, complaining that influencers were asking to eat for free at the restaurant. And that's absolutely fine. You get to pick who you work for. But then they were just like, you know, giving it to every influencer in the industry that how dare they charge, they get free food. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, um, at just looking at the numbers, like I created a reel, it had 23,000 views for a local restaurant. It was shared over a thousand times. And it, I don't know, it, it, the numbers were crazy. But if you look at the average ticket for a, a restaurant, the industry is about $50. So if um, just any, you know, just let's say 10% of the people that tagged or shared or all these things that interacted with my reel. The other thing is that you see people making actual comments to, you know, making plans to go visit the restaurant in the comments yeah. of the reels, right? So you see all of this intent for all of these customers, you know, maybe 30,000 potential customers. Let's say they actually got a hundred customers walk in the door because of that real, that one week. Um, what's a hundred times 50? That's $50,000. 5,000. <laughs> yeah. So 5,000. 5,000? Yeah. No, that's crazy. I mean, that is a lot. So and that's a low number of conversion. So yeah, that we're like, super low balling in terms of how many people we that reel got in uh, just a random restaurant in the door. So when you're looking at it that way, it was like, yeah, if you 
you know, as the business owner, if you don't value to see the value in that you're missing huge opportunities and that same example applies for all the brands so you have to see mm -hmm. what you're offering the brands you know like sometimes uh you you feel like oh it's fun <laughs> so i just want to do it for free but when you do that as brie mentioned you're kind of hurting the entire industry so let's make sure we all know our worth and value our work and can I also just pop in and say too, like, you know, like I've heard, I mean, I've been in the blogging industry for over 10 years now. And, um, I've also seen like the crap, that crappy side of it where, you know, bloggers are giving other bloggers a bad name. And so like being aware of that and not being a person to be overly pushy when it comes to like, if you, especially like in person, local things, like working with restaurants or working with brands and, can, 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 some can come across like too like oh well I deserve this oh well you should be giving this to me for free and stuff just treat everybody with kindness everybody with empathy let's you know help each other out of course don't give away the house for free but you know like just expressing you know empathy and kindness every time you go out so that way Thank things like that don't happen with giving uh, bloggers a bad name absolutely I love that you mentioned that Brie we're talking about you know, knowing our worth and valuing our, uh, our our work and our time, but absolutely, that does not mean that we are not professional. Every single time we are out in the world, we have got to be super duper professional, and you know, give the whole industry a good name. And you know, uh, you know, when you see people that don't value your time, it, don't fight with them. <laughs> either no. educate them or walk away and spend your time with someone who does value you. So thank you so much for that, Brie. Absolutely. Okay, so quickly, we have four minutes. Let's see how many more questions we can answer. Hoja is asking, what tips do you have for pitching brands? Are media kits the way to go? What should be included in the pitch? I love media kits. I think it's a great way to showcase who you are, um, and what you bring to the table and also showcase, like, I think this is even more important is showcasing who your audience is and what they love. Um, so it can be as simple as like a one pager with some stats and some information about what you blog about, um, what your audience loves, their demographics, and maybe some logos of past brands you've worked with too. I've seen other ones that are like multiple pages and they showcase kind of, um, Oh, what was the word you used? But basically like a report of like worked, here's a picture of you working with another brand or, um, and it shows those stats of like, this is what we did for this company. This was the results. Um, and showcasing that can also be really, really great. Absolutely, Brie. Something that, um, I, I think you were talking about like a case study or a portfolio. Yes, case study, thank you. <laughs> Okay. So absolutely. If you're pitching a brand, you definitely will want to have your media kit ready because that might be the first question they ask you. Um, but when you're pitching a brand, you really just should have a very short and sweet email introducing yourself and kind of a general idea of what you want to do with the brand and just making sure you mention your followers and maybe your engagement rate or whatever number is really amazing for you. <laughs> And then yeah. just send it over and see if there's any interest. If there's any interest, then you follow up with the nitty gritty details and maybe the media kit in the second email. They, the, probably the first question they're gonna ask is if you can send your media kit. And make sure you also include links to all of your social media channels and blogs and good stuff in your first introductory email. And also like, don't just, don't just send one pitch. Um, and also don't forget to follow up. People are super, super busy. It's, you know, somebody that is in marketing on the other side of that in email, who's got an inbox that is just flooded. So it's okay to follow up with them um, multiple times. And I highly recommend you do that. Um, and then, oh shoot, I forgot. What was the other thing I was gonna say? It'll come back to me, okay. but yes, follow up. Following up, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Do not be afraid to follow up. Um, okay, wonderful. And then Jamie's asking, will this be, this was recorded, will be available later? Yes, you will all receive an email with the webinar replay. 
uh, so that you can rewatch what you missed. <laughs> this became a know your worth uh, episode for sure. All righty. And finally, Paige is asking, have any suggestions for quality, ethical way to increase followers without having to buy them so we can monetize better with more followers and more interest from brands? Create great content and connect with and focus on the people that you have following you. If you can connect with them and provide them with quality content that solves problems for them, and whether that's making them laugh or giving them awesome, you know, examples and tutorials and DIYs, whatever it may be, focus on them. And when you love on them and they love your stuff, you're going to organically grow because you're going to, they're going to share it. They're going to share it with other people, ask them to share it. They're going to share it with their friends. They're going to tag other people. And I know it's super easy to get caught up in that numbers game. You don't want to kill your engagement rate by buying followers um, and brands know when you buy followers. So stay true and hone in and keep your blinders on focusing on your audience. I love that, Brie. That is absolutely true. Um, so yeah, I love that advice of just focusing on the followers that you have now and just giving them so much love that they become true fans and they will spread the yeah. word for you and find you more of those people who truly love what you're doing. And as you're creating content for those people, just always keep in mind that the social networks always promote their new features the most. So you will have more opportunity to reach more of those people who truly love what you do if you create content on the new features. So right now, Reels has been around for about a year. It's still performing better than um, than uh, in, in uh, a in feed post, but other stuff that they have been trying really hard to promote lately, for example, on Instagram is their lives. So jump on lives, try to figure out how you can uh, solve problems for your audience and uh, via a live. And uh, just keep that in mind when you're always, you know, make your people happy and try to find what are the new features they're promoting so that you can get more organic reach. And just keep going at it and don't worry so much about your followers just worry about your their engagement and um yeah. so that you can you know talk more about your amazing engagement numbers page <laughs> instead of your huge massive following um all right you guys well it that's uh 102 we went over a little bit brie thank you so much for joining us today do you have anything upcoming you'd like to share with us um, no, just thank you so much for having me. If you guys, I have a free class I'd love to just offer you guys. It's more about, you know, what we were just talking about and continuing this conversation on monetizing your blog. Um, and you can find that at thrivestogether.blog slash profit. I'll throw that in the chat real quick. Um, and yeah, I hope I'm, I'm so proud of all of you. Thank you guys so much for sharing your numbers and for being vulnerable. Like I know that's not always an easy thing to share. And so I really, really appreciate that. And thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for coming and sharing all of your insights with our members. We really appreciate it. And you guys, thank you as always for joining us and being such an engaged audience and really opening up and sharing your numbers. That was amazing. It felt so good to have, you know, just some clarity in terms of pricing. I hope that helped you guys out and um we will have more uh webinar guests coming up always check out the bloggerunion.eventbrite.com for our upcoming schedule of events and we shall see you soon bye everyone